In this video, what we're gonna be doing is hosting our very own internet offline. What we're gonna be doing is getting some of the internet's most important resources, such as Wikipedia, ArchWiki, Ask Ubuntu, and one of my personal favorites, the option to host the entirety of the world's mapping data, giving you offline and basically permanent access to all of these resources. Now, a fair question you may have is why the hell would anybody want to do this? And there's a couple of reasons. First, of course, if internet isn't something that you can easily access, whether that be you're in some super far rural county and you just find it easier to have a lot of this information offline, or you can be in some remote village somewhere, the internet isn't accessible to everybody and that's fine. The second main reason, and this is more of a uh, doomer mentality and kind of my personal mentality, is you don't necessarily trust the network infrastructure of your nation to have the data available to you all the time. Or maybe you just don't trust whoever your government happens to be to allow you to have access to all this data. Still, no matter your reason, it's a fun project, it's a cool thing to do, and it's nice to have just on your NAS all that data. Speaking of NAS, this video is made possible by you green in their NAS solutions. Because oh boy, Wikipedia is about 100 gigabytes and we're gonna need a place to put it. You green is currently known for their charge cables, phone accessories, things like that, but they are jumping into the NAS market starting on Kickstarter March 26th. They're gonna have models ranging from two bay to four bay. I have a four bay NAS right here. And here's the spec sheet of all the NASs that they have. I currently have the DXP 4800 plus. And as you can see with the CPU models gone are the days of needing to use Celeron, their lowest in one coming at 239, has an Intel N100 which is phenomenal. This guy has an Intel Pentium 5 cores, 6 threads, and you can get all the way up to a 12th gen i5 with 10 cores. Just on the front we have an SD card reader USB type C and on the back we have two LAN ports, one is 2.5 gig and the other one is 10 gigabit. HDMI, some more USB, power. No screws or anything needed, you just pop the hard drive in and then it slides into the NAS. The hardware is absolutely fantastic and they do have their own software for these things. I played around a little bit with it and so far so good. Their application in its current state being able to access all your files, photos, and more from one convenient location. This includes an integrated AI smart assistant that works without internet, allowing you to do things such as search pictures by text. They're going to be coming out with uh, Docker support and virtualization support pretty soon, but I can't really speak on the software much until they actually come out with that, in which I'll be doing a non-sponsored review of this device, so do subscribe and watch out for that. And if you go ahead and drop a $5 deposit before March 26th, you can get 40% off. Now with that, we're going to get into the guide and show you how to do this. Now what have I done already? A couple things. First, I installed Ubuntu Server on Proxmox. You can install Ubuntu Server on whatever you want to go and host this, whether that be a small mini PC like this, if you have a rack mount server, or you already have a NAS like this that you can install a virtual machine on. And I will note the software that we're gonna be using does have desktop applications, so you don't even necessarily need to host this data on a server, but I think it's a really good idea to do so because if you're in a situation you actually want to use this data, you can have it on your local network and devices can just hook up and see this data just by typing in an IP address instead of having to have all the data locally or even need those desktop applications available. So what have I done? I've installed Ubuntu server, I updated it, and then I used the convenient script from Docker to get that installed. We are gonna be doing this with Docker. And then what I did, because this Proxmox virtual machine, I only gave 128 gigabytes. So I actually linked up to a NAS I already have up and running because I already have a bunch of ZIM files on that. They take up a whole bunch of space depending on what you actually uh, want to store. And I simply did that by first installing a CIF utils. We made a media or a data directory within our media folder. And you can see here, this is the actual line in our FS tab to point and mount to that. So we can see the IP address that's gonna to mount to that data folder it's using CIFS. We have the proper permissions and the directory for my actual username and password. So now if I mount that, so sudo mount A, Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I changed my username for this server. Mount A. There we go. So let's check and make sure all the data is there. Media, data, sweet. You can see my Zim folder there. So if I cd into Zim, 
ls you could see the data i currently have we have uh wikipedia wiki books wiki spaces wiki house and ted talk stuff we're good to go this right here is kiwix this is the website and organization that provides all of this you can see internet connect without internet access i do recommend you kind of read through this it's a really really cool organization you can see their mission here knowledge is a fundamental human right so they're dedicated to providing free and open access to knowledge for everyone everywhere and you know, a bunch of statistics bunch of articles who their partners are we're going to come over here to get the downloads in just a sec but first i want to show you this website library.kiwix.org if we go here this is what our server is going to look like once we have it kind of self-hosted and you can see some of the data here we have wikiversity arch wiki Bitcoin Wiki, Wikipedia, and you can see Wikipedia is just about 110 gigabytes for the entire thing, which really, if you think about it, is not too bad. And then like ArchWiki, a lot less information, but a lot nonetheless is about 30 megabytes. So you could really self-host a lot of data. If I actually click on this, we could kind of view what it's going to look like on our end offline. This right here is Wikipedia. So for example, if I go to geography, let's go to Europe, Europe geography. We've got a lot of information. We have a lot of pictures. There's other versions of Wikipedia that you could get that take up a lot less space. And scrolling up, we have Wikipedia 100, top 100 articles. We have an offline version with about roughly half the size and there's just a bunch of different versions so you can really get exactly what you need and of course to actually download this data you could click right here to start the download and then move it into whatever server or wherever you want to actually store this data so from there to actually host the data what we are going to do is head back over here and go to all apps from there we have the actual kind of mobile and desktop applications that you can use if you don't want to set up a server but if I go down to the Kiwix server right here under Docker images, and I do believe it is this first one right here. Ah, there it is. Took me a sec to find that. So we do have some options to go ahead and access this. We have um, the option to point it to specific Zim files. But what we're going to do right here is if you want to load all Zims within a directory, use this. So I'm just going to grab this right here. Give that a quick copy. And do know I did set this up in non root mode i'll link to this down below uh if you don't know much about docker and you want to learn how to use it we've recently made a pretty good video going over the basics so i'll link to that so let's paste that on in and we are going to want to change some things here including this right here tmp slash zim is not the proper directory you're going to want to point this to your proper directory uh, mine in this instance is going to be media data and then the zim and then another thing I'm going to change is the default port because the service that we're going to be setting up in a little bit, OpenStreetMap, is going to want the port 8080. So I'm just going to change it to the port 8000. So now if I go ahead and hit enter, what it should do after it pulls the image and everything it needs is it should list all the Zim files. So now we can actually access this. So then let's go to our IP address at 10.0052 or whatever yours is at the port 8000. There we go. We can see we are now hosting this little bit of resources offline. So again, if I go to Wikipedia here, this is going to be the English all maxi. So everything I can get. And I do need to update these. I've had these for a little bit of time. And here we go. We have everything offline. So if I go to something, let's go to trains. Here is the wiki, <laughs> Wikipedia page on trains. And it's cool because all the links work too. So if I go to electric locomotives, awesome solar panels awesome cloud cover get some nice geoscience stuff going on cyclones we can learn about those and all this is offline on your local network and then another example uh, wiki how here we have the full website with all the images so you can learn guitar chords singing motorcycles driving basics a lot of stuff and one of the things that i find really cool is ted talks here so if i go to a ted med for example we could go down and actually play these full videos so if i open up this one tracking help with johnson foundation we have full videos with additional information on them so really nice i do recommend everybody have a zim server with at least a little bit of data that you can access if the internet goes down whether that be wikipedia wiki how whatever you need now the other piece of data that we need in this kind of a doomer scenario that's in my head is mapping data we need to know how to get around without having to whip out an atlas whenever we need to do so or actually find an updated one and that's going to be with this right here this is the openstreetmap tile server 
Another thing that's pretty easy to go ahead and install takes a little bit more time. And what we're going to want to do first is get a volume. We're going to want to create a volume called OSM data. We just give that a copy, open up our terminal here, and I'm going to hit control C, which is going to cancel out that Zim server. If I wanted to run this, I would just go ahead and run it in dash D for detached mode. And I think that would work. There we go. So now our Zim server is still running in the background. But what we want to do is create the data for our mapping stuff. So let's create that volume. And depending on the data you grab, this will take up a lot of space. So do keep note of that. And if you need to create this volume on a network share or something, I'll leave to some documentation on how to do that. But if you're only just grabbing like a specific region, it should only be a couple gigabytes. And speaking of, this right here is the website that I've been pulling the data from. There are other websites that you can use, but this one is really good. It is the OpenStreetMap Data Extracts. Now, here we have regions and we have all the files that we're gonna need. And we can see when we hover over these data or the specific data, it shows us the region. Now, for me, let's go uh, North America here. Within North America, you could either get the entire continent if you would like to, or you could get specific data sets or subregions. For example, we have a US Midwest, so I could get the US West, and we have all the data sizes here. So US Pacific, for example, is not going to be a lot of data. And you can see over here, if I hover over it, what exactly it's going to be. It looks like Alaska and some of the islands. And I do believe if we click on like United States of America, we could go down to state Pacific or specific data if we would like to, which I think I'm going to do because uh, I did the entirety. I did the whole like Western region of the United States when I was testing this and it took a long time to process. I mean, the download probably took like five minutes and it probably took like an hour and a half to process the data into that uh, volume that we, we created. In this case, I'm gonna grab Washington. So if we click on Washington, it gives us some more formats, including the commonly used formats. And in this case, we're gonna be paying attention to the PBF as well as this poly file here. So going over here, there's a lot of information on how to set this up. There's a lot of different ways to do it and a lot of different ways to use like alternative styles and things like that. But just for our use case here, what we're gonna do is this command. This is letting the container download the file. You can just download it yourself and point to the file and have it do it locally. But I mean, we might as well do this. So let's copy that, open up our terminal here and paste it on in. So we have the downloads right here. So we're gonna need to change these URLs to what we're actually gonna be using. So this one is going to be the PBF file. So let's head back over here. I'm gonna right click, copy this link and then drop it in here. And then we're gonna get the poly link. So let's get rid of that. And then let's copy this poly link, open up our terminal, paste that in, and there we go. So essentially what this command is doing is it's gonna download both of these files that we need. It's gonna mount the volume here inside of itself as a data database. And then it's gonna download, import, and process the data. So, and you can see here, it is gonna be doing this with a uh, Postgres, if you were curious. So let's hit enter. It's first gonna pull the image and then begin downloading and importing that data. And there it goes, it's starting the Progress database, downloading everything that we need. It's going pretty quick. Again, I picked a single state of the United States instead of uh, half the country like I did last time. And of course, pull what you think you might need. So there we go, we can see it's now processing. Now I'm gonna give it probably like 10, 20 minutes based on the hour and a half it took for half the country. Uh, should be done fairly soon. All right, it's done. So now that the data is imported, we actually need to launch the server so we can access that data. And to do this, it's gonna be right under here. I'm pretty sure it's this one right here, the very first one under connecting to Postgres. So let's give that a copy, pop that on in there. And I don't think we have to make any changes. We have the uh, connection to the database. We have it on the port 8080. Now, it does take a sec, so do give it some time. So for example, if I go over here to the port 8080, we can see the tile server is running, but it's still kind of loading up some of that data for us. If I go ahead over to Washington State, zoom in a bit, you can see we have the data. Let's zoom into my teeny tiny hometown of uh, Yakult, Washington. Again, this is the first time it's loading and rendering out, so it's gonna, gonna take a little bit of time. There it is, Yakult, Washington. <laughs> I went to this school right here for uh, kindergarten and second grade, I believe. But yeah, we have all the data and I'm pretty sure that you can use like uh, various mobile applications or even desktop applications to connect to your very own server and then use like uh, GPS navigation and things like that. Well, not really GPS, but navigation, do like some good old uh, 
MapQuest <laughs> direction printouts. That's if for some reason that GPS was down. Dun, dun, dun. But regardless, that is how you create your very own internet offline. We have access to a bunch of data, very critical information. Pair this up with your Plex to replace streaming services or Jellyfin, whatever you happen to be using, and all your other stuff you have running in the home lab, and you don't need the internet. <laughs> you don't need, but it's good to have.